Do you think there's words spoken by Jesus in the Bible that completely refute and debunk Calvinism? Well, there are. I'm going to share two of them, two of them with you today. Two Bible verses, extremely well known, both of them. You'll recognize them. I'll share it and show it on the screen as well. And we're going to read through and I'll explain to you why if these words of Jesus are true, and I wholeheartedly believe that they are true. I hope you believe with me that all the Bible is true. If they are true, Calvinism is definitely false. But if Calvinism were true, then the words of Jesus cannot be true. We're going to start with the first one. John 14, verse 6. Everyone's heard this, I think, right? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The part where he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, is only true if, in fact, it applies to every single person who's born, every one of us. This has to be true. The words of Jesus cease to be true if for certain people he is not the way and he is not the truth and is not the life. If that does not apply to every single person, then the statement is not true. Okay, let's imagine for a minute that John 6, 44 in the Bible says that all that the Father has given me, meaning Jesus, I will lose none. Then let's also imagine that Romans 3, 10 through 12 in the Bible says that no one seeks after God, no one does good, and then ask the question, are none good? Because choosing God would be a good thing. But if we can't do anything pleasing to God, then only God could initiate a change in a person that would make him want to follow Jesus. Now that we have established a biblical truth, let's look at John 14 verse 6 where Jesus says, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let's apply our biblical truths to this passage. The way, exclusive path. Jesus is the exclusive path to salvation. There is no other way to the Father except through him. This underscores the belief in the necessity of faith in Christ for salvation. The truth, revelation of God. Jesus embodies the truth of God. He is the full and final revelation of God's nature and will. John 1 verses 14 and 18. In him, the truths of God's promises, character, and salvation are fully manifested. The life, source of eternal life, Jesus is the source of both physical and spiritual life. Eternal life is found in him alone, John 3 verse 16, John 10 verse 10. Through his resurrection, believers are assured of their own resurrection and eternal life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Particular Redemption This reinforces the doctrine of particular redemption. Salvation is not a general offer but is applied specifically to those who are elect. Only those who are in Christ, chosen by God, will come to the Father. In summary, Jesus' statement in John 14 verse 6 encapsulates key Reformed doctrines about the exclusivity and sufficiency of Christ in salvation. It highlights the necessity of faith in Jesus as the only way to God, the absolute truth found in Christ alone, the gift of eternal life granted through union with Christ the particular nature of redemption and God's sovereignty in electing his people. This understanding reinforces the central Reformed belief in salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Let's move forward and expose this wolf in sheep's clothing and show just how much of a false teacher this man is. For everyone, up until the moment the elect are given irresistible grace and given faith to believe in Christ, as a byproduct of their irresistible grace by the Holy Spirit, regenerating them and then giving them faith, right? For everyone else, they are stuck forever in their life, right? In the state of total depravity, which means total inability, an inability to believe the gospel and to receive the gift of God's grace. They cannot do that according to Calvinism. The message of the gospel is perceived as foolishness by those who are perishing, as explained by Paul in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. So the gospel is foolish. No one seeks after God. No one does good. Do we see a pattern about the state of mankind according to the Bible? Let me go to the next one. Mark 16. There's different versions in the Bible of the Great Commission Jesus gave us to go preach the gospel. And here's a simple one verse version of the Great Commission in the Gospel of Mark, 
chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Well, once again, this is if the gospel is not available to the non-elect, and it's really not up to them to choose or reject, and it's on them, they're accountable to God for their decision, if that's not the case. But in fact, God's already decreed and determined their decision, and they cannot receive the good news of the gospel, then it's not good news for them. Let me go to the next one. Every Calvinist believes in the Great Commission. We are commanded to preach the gospel to everyone. It's not up to us to preach so that we can save people. Instead, we proclaim the gospel not knowing who the elect are. It is God using us as a messenger. God has to remove the heart of stone before someone can believe. A Calvinist has a 100% success rate because it is God working through us and in us. The non-Calvinist has to hope what he said to the non-believer was enough to change him. And I'll put it back on the screen. Revelation 22, 17. Maybe you're familiar with it. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst, come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. That's an open invitation to everyone. No one's rejected out of that. No one's incapable of doing that. It's an offer made. And let's just go back to the beginning. And the spirit and the bride. Who is the spirit and the bride? We have the Holy Spirit. And we have the bride of Christ. We have the Holy Spirit who is God. God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, the three, the Godhead, three co-equal persons of the Godhead, and the Holy Spirit doing work in the world to convict the unbeliever of their unbelief so they'll believe in Christ is, is active in the world. But people can quench the Holy Spirit and reject the message. And so the Holy Spirit says, come to everyone regardless if they accept or reject. That's on them. They're accountable. And the bride, see God, the, the Calvinist says, God doesn't cooperate with man. But in fact, God has given us the great privilege to cooperate with him in delivering the good, message, the good news of the message of the gospel. Jesus has given us the great commission and said, go do this. Again, let's apply our learned biblical truths. No one seeks God. No one does good. The gospel is foolish to the unbeliever. So what is Revelation 22 verse 17 saying? Revelation 22 verse 17 highlights the universal invitation of the gospel, the role of the Holy Spirit and the church in extending this call, and the assurance that salvation is a free gift of God's grace. From a Reformed perspective, this verse underscores the distinction between the general and effectual calls, the necessity of the Holy Spirit's work in drawing the elect to Christ, the assurance of salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. This understanding aligns with key Reformed doctrines and emphasizes the sufficiency of God's grace and salvation. Let's sum this up. Here are some concerns about how the non-Reformed view could lead to what might be considered bad doctrine. 1. It might lead to the belief that God's will can be thwarted by human actions, which can diminish the assurance that God is fully in control. 2. It can lead to a man-centered gospel where human decision is viewed as the decisive factor in salvation potentially downplaying the necessity and power of God's grace. 3. It can lead to a lack of assurance of salvation, causing believers to live in fear of losing their salvation rather than resting in the finished work of Christ. 4. It could inadvertently suggest that salvation is partly dependent on human actions and perseverance, leading to a form of works-based righteousness contrary to the doctrine of salvation by grace alone. 5. It might imply that Christ's sacrifice was insufficient on its own, thus diminishing the power and efficacy of the cross. 6. It could lead to a misunderstanding of God's grace and election, suggesting that God's choice is reactive rather than proactive, which can conflict with the biblical depiction of God's sovereign election. These concerns underscore the importance Calvinists place on God's sovereign grace and the assurance it provides in the doctrines of election and perseverance. My God is control. My God has a plan for every human being. My God's plan cannot be thwarted by man's free will choice. Jesus paid for all of my sins and all of your sins, if you are a believer, and if you believe, it is because you have been given to Jesus by the Father. And Jesus will lose none. Don't let this wolf lead you astray. He should turn and repent. Please consider giving this video a like and share it. Also, please consider subscribing. Thank you and God bless.